What's going on everybody? The time has come to get this silver maple log milled up. I got this a while back from a local arborist and it's just been waiting until we have some time to fire up the saw. We got that time, it's time to get this done. Now this log is a pretty decent size. It's about 34 inches across, roughly seven feet long. 34 inches though is a little over the capacity of my little chainsaw mill. So we gotta make a couple modifications to that first so we can use it on this log. This is my Alaskan mill, and in its current state, it's only a 24 inch mill. There's no way it's gonna work on that silver maple log, so we need to make a couple changes to this thing first. Here I have ordered up the parts that I'm going to need to convert my mill into a 48 inch wide mill. It's gonna be plenty wide enough. Let's pop this thing open, get these parts changed. Oh look, a bottle opener. I thought that was a bag of bolts. I guess they don't really want this thing to come open. A couple of rails and a new round bar. This should be really quick. I'm gonna try to do this one piece at a time, so hopefully I don't have to disassemble the whole thing. First, I'll loosen up the bolts that secure this round bar, and I can slide the bar out of place. Now, in theory, I should be able to just slide this new one back in. Now hopefully, I can do the same thing with these two side pieces. These are a carriage bolt underneath there that slide in this kind of a T-track here. Hopefully I can just loosen everything up, slide the piece out, slide the new one in, and tighten it down. I'll just do exactly the opposite to install the new longer bar. It's just like downtown. And bam! Just like that, that quick, we now have a 48 inch Alaskan chainsaw mill. Now in case you guys are wondering, yes, this is a Granberg mill, and no, this video is not sponsored or anything by Granberg. I purchased all of these parts myself, but if you guys are looking at getting an Alaskan mill and you're not quite sure what size to get, and you end up going with a smaller mill, you find out later on you need a bigger one, really quick and simple to upgrade this to a larger size. You just order the right pieces, convert it right over. They sell all the upgrade parts right on their website. It's really quick and simple. Just change out a few parts and we're ready to run, except we're missing one very important piece. And this monstrosity is what we're gonna load up in the newly reconfigured mill. Now you guys have seen this saw before, I've had it for a little while. This is a Husqvarna 372 XP. I believe it's a 72 cc saw. Now when I was running the 24 inch mill, I ran a 30 inch bar in this guy and it did just fine. This time around, we've got a 42 inch bar with a dedicated ripping chain. I'm not completely sure at this moment how this power head is gonna run this size bar, but we're gonna find out here real quick. I think it's gonna do okay. I might have to go kind of slow. This really is something that I would like to upgrade. I'd like to get at least 100 cc or larger power head in the future. For now, this is what we have and that's what we're gonna use. But if any of you guys have a line on a larger power head that might work for my application, let me know. So I guess instead of me standing here talking, let's load this thing up in the mill. I 
want to show you this log really quick before we start making any cuts. There's really this goofy hump on the top piece. So I've got the Granberg Easy Rails set up across the top so that I can basically chop that weird shaped piece off, which will then give me a nice flat surface for all the rest of the cuts. I'm going to get the goofy piece out of the way first. Now there are other options for making your first cut nice and flat. You don't have to use these rails, but they work really well as the guides on the top of the mill ride along these rails. It gives me a nice flat cut. You'll see how that works in just a second. With the mill modified and the saw loaded up, there's only one thing left to do. And now we can begin making our very first cut. You can see how the aluminum extrusions on the mill ride along the rails that are along the top of the log. This is what keeps the first cut nice and straight, especially when you're working with a wonky shaped log like I have. It's really important to try to get the first cut as straight as you possibly can because all of your cuts after this are going to be based off the surface that you just cut. So in order to keep all of your cuts nice and straight, you got to have a straight surface to start with. And that's why it's important to use some sort of a system to guide your saw on the very first cut. Whether you use something like these rails sold by Granberg, or what I see a lot of other people using is an aluminum extension ladder. They're nice and straight, you just bolt it down to the top of your log and make your cut exactly like you would with rails like this. For shorter cuts, I've even used just some standard 2x6 material screwed to the top of the log. It works just fine. Whatever method works the best for you and fits within your budget. If you're wondering why I have that red ratchet strap on the log, really it's just to help hold those rails in place. Sometimes the rails can vibrate and shake around and I've actually had it move a time or two so this is just some extra insurance. I'll remove it before the saw cuts it. As you're making your cut, the weight of the slab above the saw can actually pinch the chain and cause it to bind. So some wedges placed in the saw curve help prevent that. Now since this first cut did not go all the way to the edge, I've reset up the rails and I'm going to make another cut. It's going to be about an inch and a quarter or so, at least on at this end of the board. My goal is to get a nice clean cut all the way to the end. Then I can set these rails aside and everything else goes really quick. It's just getting that first cut nice and straight that takes the most time, at least for me anyways. For the next cut, I'm still going to maintain that inch and a quarter thickness on this slab. You can see here how the aluminum extrusions of the mill are now going to ride directly on the wood, keeping it nice and flat. That's why it's so important to get it nice and flat from the beginning. It makes the rest of this go much easier. Let's see what we have. Ooh, that's looking cool. Now we can really start to see what's inside this log. Now that I have a nice clean cut all the way across, I'm going to change the thickness to about two and a quarter. I'm going to slab the majority of this in nice thick slabs. That way there's some play as they start to dry. If they warp or twist, you can remove the material, flatten them out and still have a nice thick slab. Now, if you're not familiar or maybe don't really know how the adjustments work on these mills, it's really easy to adjust. I'll show you really quick how we can make those adjustments. 
You set your thickness using this scale on the side of the mill. To adjust it, you just loosen these lock nuts, slide the piece to the measurement you want, and then tighten them back down. The numbers on this scale represent the distance between the bottom of the aluminum extrusion rails and the top of the chainsaw chain. There's the same adjustment on both sides of the mill. You have to make sure they're set the same or you'll get a tapered cut. Once you have your thickness set for your next cut, these aluminum rails will glide along the top edge of the slab and give you a nice flat surface. And there's another super heavy slab for the stack. I think it's really cool when you open up a log like this. Nobody on this earth has ever seen the wood that's inside this log, and that's really cool. There's something special about that to me. Since the rest of this process is pretty much the same, just cutting slabs, I'm not gonna bore you with the rest of that process, but look at the color inside this. Isn't that really cool? I can already imagine that into some sort of a table or something and some finish on there. Man, that's gonna be cool. Well guys, all that's left now of this slab is a pile of sawdust. That was actually quite a lot of work. These slabs were really heavy, but I've got them stacked up, stickered so they can dry. Maybe I'll be able to use them in a year or so. We'll see how quickly they dry. I'm gonna monitor them pretty closely. So I hope you guys found this video helpful, informative, or maybe even a slightest bit interesting. I know I had a good time milling these up. Milling is something that I want to get more in depth with. I really enjoy the process. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Make sure you stick around, because in an upcoming episode, I'm gonna be using some lumber that I milled on the Alaskan mill. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time. Cool. Now I'm thirsty. But now we got some time. It's time to get this. There's a cat. Look at there's a cat. No, go, go, shoot, shoot, cat. <laughs> there's our daily siren coming through. It's every day. A couple times a day, a lot of times. It's ridiculous. There's a fly in here. It's probably going to land on me while I'm trying to talk to you guys. That always seems to be how it works. It lands right there. Let's see. Note to self, make sure you have enough gas before starting a cut or you will run out right at the end of your really? cut.